Okay, so let's start building our model. As I went through, I picked out the variables that I thought were going to be useful in trying to predict churn, our dependent variable. Uh, and for me, uh, I came up with the D voicemail plan, which is a classification variable, international plan, which is another classification variable, voicemail messages, a quantitative variable, all the rest are going to be quantitative variables. Uh, I saw day minutes and day charge, looked like they were both, uh, like they differed uh, between people who churn and people who don't. Uh, it turns out we're actually only going to need one of them uh, in this data set. It looks like we get charged a uh, constant per minute rate and so day minutes and day charge are really essentially the same variable. Uh, so I'm just going to use day charge in here. Uh, next I, I picked out international calls as looking like it was significant. I had total minutes and total charge, uh, but again I'm just going to use total charge here because uh, we've got the same relationship then between uh, um, between minutes and charge for total. Um, and then customer service calls looks like it's a very useful uh, variable as well. Okay, under response, let's fit to level one so that we're predicting, our, our, we can interpret our parameter estimates as a positive value means we're more likely to churn, negative means less likely to churn. And then under effects, we'll start by adding all of our variables in as main effects. Hit run, and see what we can get. Apologies, these models take uh, take a few minutes, or if you take a minute or so to run. Uh, it's just a, a consequence of the larger that our model gets, the more observations uh, we have, uh, the more math it is that the Enterprise Guide has got to do. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a very significant model overall, no surprise there. Most of our variables are significant. Uh, one thing that I hadn't talked about for you before uh, is the difference between this type 3 analysis of effects and the analysis of maximum likelihood estimates tables. They're going to look uh, basically the same here in the sense that they've got the same p-values, the same uh, walled chi-square value. I'll we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, if you have a categorical variable that has more than one level, uh, you're going to want to look at the type 3 analysis of effects in order to evaluate its effect. Uh, this is, if you remember back for back in the linear regression section, uh, we had the uh, partial F test uh, for testing whether a set of variables, a group of variables, was useful or not. Um, so we could do that formally with a partial F test, we could do it informally by uh, looking at the adjusted R squared. Uh, this type 3 analysis of effects uh, does effectively, effectively the same thing as the partial F test, where it um, um, analyzes the effect of dropping uh, all of those, uh, all of that group of variables at once. Uh, for us, we don't have anything like that, well, I, I suppose we did for the um, uh, area code, but we'd already determined the area code didn't look like it was significant. Uh, looking at these p-values here, we've got uh, only day charge is really pretty obviously insignificant, uh, so our next step is probably going to be to remove uh, day charge from our model. Uh, so let's do that now. Modify task under effects, drop out day charge, and rerun this model. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, have a look at which of our variables seem to be important. And the the nice tool that we've got for that is this walled chi-square. I know this is going to eventually refresh, but for now we can just keep on talking about it. The walled chi-square is telling us how much of an improvement in our model that one variable is giving us. 
And so what we're seeing is customer service call and international plan, both of those variables seem to be uh, creating very large improvements in the model uh, based on the high walled chi-squared. Uh, now that we've taken out day charge, uh, total charge has popped up as uh, doing the same. So these are likely to be variables that we should continue to investigate. So we could add in uh, some polynomial terms, for example, we could consider some interaction terms involving these variables that look to be very, very important. Uh, looking down here at our area under the curve, we've currently got 82%. We're going to be able to do quite a bit better than that by starting to add in some polynomial terms. So let's look at that for total charge and for customer service call. So let's modify task. Under effects, for total charge, let's try a quadratic, so second degree polynomial. And for customer service call, let's do the same. We've got customer service call squared here now. OK, run our model. And we may well see uh, that these two are useful, indicating that customer service call and total charge would have non-linear effects on the, uh, in the model. Okay, so eventually this will pop up and we'll get to see whether these quadratic terms are useful. What have we got? Total charge squared, very useful. Customer service calls squared, very useful. So it looks like we've done a good thing adding in these quadratic terms, and in fact total charge squared is still, still has a really, really high walled chi-squared value. Uh, so it would probably be a good idea to consider adding on total charge cubed, uh, maybe even total charge fourth. Uh, we'll try the same for customer service calls cubed uh, and see uh, whether we need to keep on adding polynomial terms there. Our area under the curve, we've got up to 87% now. Uh, so we've improved our model uh, even more. So let's try adding on the cubic terms. Under effects, we're going to add total charge cubed, customer service calls cubed. You might be wondering why I'm not doing anything with international plan, uh, which had popped up as having a very high uh, walled chi-squared value. Uh, the reason for that is that is one of our categorical variables. And so if we square it, well, one squared is still one, zero squared is still zero. Uh, so adding in polynomials for those is not going to be useful. Uh, that could be one that we could look to investigate for uh, uh, interaction terms, though. Okay, so let's see if total charge cubed and customer service calls cubed uh, were useful. Still both very useful. Customer service calls cubed, total charge cubed, uh, very useful. We've got these uh, uh, p-values that are, again, much less than... 5% and our area under the curve has gotten better again. Uh, and so it would be uh, a good idea to you know, keep on going here. Let's add in the fourth order terms, uh, see if we again see an improvement here. Uh, total charge fourth, customer service calls fourth. Let's see if these are useful in predicting whether a customer will churn or not. As long as we're adding in these variables and they continue to be significant, uh, we're going to keep on improving our model, getting a better area under the curve, getting a, a greater degree of, uh, greater percentage of correctly predicted uh, people here. Um, so let's see if the fourth order terms ended up useful. Fourth order terms, no. Okay, so the fourth order terms both ended up not being useful. They've both got p-values uh, bigger than 5%. So we would want to then drop those out and stick with the cubic terms for each 
of our uh, total charge and customer service call variables. Now since those weren't significant, they ought not to have improved the uh, area under the curve. Uh, we've got 0.88 there. I honestly don't remember what it was beforehand, but I'm going to claim uh, that it was not much smaller than 0.88. Uh, let's see what happens when we rerun this model. So with the fourth order terms, I've got an area under the curve of 0.88. Without the fourth order terms, we get an area under the curve of... 0.88. Okay, so no substantial change there uh, with or without those fourth order terms. Okay, so this is looking like a good model at this point. And in the next video, we'll start uh, evaluating exactly how good it is, trying to understand uh, what the effects of these variables are on our uh, chance of churning.